temper just been a little bit dull. Most of us are now back in education. The weather's getting miserable outside because summer's now officially left. However, there is one decent good thing that we've got, and it is an additional Big Finish Main Range releases. Today, I'm going to take a look at the second episode for the Big Finish Main Range for September 2017, as I take a look at the one-off Fifth Doctor story, Time and Office, written by Eddie Robson. Now, it just so happens that every single year, we tend to have one month that does have one extra Big Finish main range release just because of how days and things plan out. So yeah, this month, it is of course that time again. Now this episode is a rather unusual one because much like in the previous year, we did have a Fifth Doctor story that had a selection of short stories and something of which that I wasn't aware of is this release is one of them. It's generally called Time in Office, however, much like the insert name here and other stories releases, this is in fact one of those ones that is exactly the same running time for the majority of main range releases. However, we do have sort of your subplots going all the way through. However, thing for this release is we have of course the overarching theme of the Doctor is Lord President of Gallifrey. Isn't that fun? And we have tons of political things going on all the way through. So firstly, and as always, in the description below, I would have been linked to buy a series from Big Finish website. It's currently out now for $14.99 for the physical CD and $12.99 for the download as well. As this is a part of the Big Finish main range, there is no price reductions or anything like that. It just sticks at that price and it is on the national retail at October 31st where you can get it from Forbidden Planet and Amazon and other places like that. So there is a little bit of a delay. So if you want it a little bit quicker, then order it off the Big Finish website. And what I'm going to say straight away is a rather niche episode of Doctor Who because I think that when it comes to Doctor Who, especially when it comes to Big Finish, they have essentially the full rights to do anything that they want, providing it's not in actual Doctor Who at the moment currently on TV. So they can't exactly do things from Series 10 or anything like that. But yeah, I think that with this... We never really tend to go into Gallifrey and what they do, their general customs, their culture. It's one of those things that writers always tend to hear from. And this is one of those episodes that in fact does the complete opposite of that. And we go into the political part of Gallifrey, the different laws, the different parts of lawmaking. And I'm going to say that this is not going to be everybody's cup of tea. I think that this one is definitely aimed at a direct audience. It is a niche Doctor Who story to an extent. And it's one of which that people like me, because it's all based around dull laws and dull things, Things and dull presidential work. I quite like it. However, it's not a dull story because we have a ton of dramatic things going on. I think that Eddie Robson, once again, has created a really nice sort of environment. We have some nice characters that are continuous for the majority of the stories, and it sort of rebuilds Gallifrey again and reimagines it to an extent, and maybe even sort of makes it into a little bit of a more new series style of Gallifrey. So I do like that, and I like the way that we're generally blending in with the new series a bit more. And we have a few more references that are a little bit more referencey to the new series as well, such as, say, female Time Lords and things like that. But as I say, some that was brushed over as this is generally called time in office other episodes do also have some separate names as well so the first episode is period of adjustment the second episode is past indiscretions episode three is history of heating and episode four is architect of destruction so yeah that is something that i do believe was in fact released in the recent episode of doctor who magazine and it's nowhere to be seen on the big finish website so it would be nice to maybe see those titles on there just to make it clear that it's not one two hour release and it is in fact sold 25 minutes to half an hour stories in there a look at the characters for this one now we of course have the fifth doctor played by peter davis and now we have a rather interesting version of the fifth doctor in this story where he's not necessarily being the doctor and definitely seeing a little bit more of a political figure in the doctor in this set of episodes than the actual doctor and i think that that is something rather interesting to do i think that of all the doctors that we've had if anything, the Fifth Doctor is probably one of the lowest on my list to be the Lord President, to be that engaged in power. And I think that Peter Davison does do a very good job. He carries the stories incredibly well. Generally, he has some nice moments in this one. Nothing really to stand out, however, he was still good. So have Janet Fielding as Tegan. Once again, she did a rather nice job for this release. I'm not much of a big fan of Tegan, I must admit. I think that she has some nice moments here and there in some stories. However, in others, she can just be a little bit annoying. But that said, that is kind of her character always wanting to get back to Heathrow. Her relationship with the Doctor isn't exactly that good. But yeah, I think that with this one, she gets a little bit of her own feet to an extent. She goes off and does her own things. In a way, she's a little bit more Doctory in this episode. There is a few occasions in this where she actually acts like the Doctor and partially saves the day. So I think that generally for this one, she's good. However, once again, it's Tegan, so I'm not necessarily much of a fan of her. And then finally, for companions, we have Louise Jameson, of course, who plays Leela, the fourth Doctor companion, because after the invasion of 
time. She's left on Gallifrey with K9, and I think the interactions that she has with the Fifth Doctor is really nice, and the way they meet up back again is really good. But the they've incorporated a little bit of development into her character. I like the way that we have that new version of her that is very much sort of developing to Gallifrey customs. However, at the same time, we have a lot more of that Tribe of the Seventeen style of Leela in there that is a lot more tribal, a lot more savage to an extent. However, she's still that warrior, and I think that for this release, definitely, Louise Jameson is probably maybe my favourite character of this release. The final character that I'm going to give a little bit of a mention to is Sherry Ann Davis, who plays Castellan Lowry. Now, I do love the Castellan when it comes to Doctor Who. I mention this in Doom Coalition quite a lot. I like these consistent characters that we have all the time, especially when it involves Gallifrey. And we have the Castellan once again, but this time a female Castellan, which at this current time in Doctor Who may be considered a little bit weird. We did, of course, have Chancellor Flavia, who was never really seen again, from what I can remember rightly. I don't particularly know. And we had the Inquisitor. However, I don't believe we ever had a female female Castellan up until now. I do believe maybe in the new series that might have been referenced as well. But yeah, generally for her, I think that she was really nice. And by the very end, she in fact became the acting president of Gallifrey. So we have sort of the females rising up in power, once again, harking back to the new series slightly and bring it into classic Doctor Who. So I do quite like that. The way that I like to think of this release is we have four different episodes and four of which try and do something different. The first episode is mainly based around the idea of taking the Doctor out of time. We have some Vortex Manipulator technology in there, so that's all a new series reference, yay. But yeah, we have um, him being taken out of time, whether or not he likes it to be the Lord President, so Gallifrey puts him in charge. And then we have him just stumbling out of the TARDIS, essentially onto a political podium. And there he is, is the Lord President already. So you have him getting the robes, all the exciting things of Rassel on the sash, the big massive stick thing, I don't know, the thimble of Rassilon as well, which was something that was incorporated in a little bit later. The first episode is really interesting because we have the idea of building in new laws, and one of the first things that the Doctor in fact says, without even going past all his political party, is he wants to introduce new academies and people can go to the academy if they're from different backgrounds. And I sort of felt there was a little bit of reflection in that between modern day life today and the way that we have different unis and university and how they want to try and incorporate people in from different backgrounds. To try and become sort of and have a degree or a, go on to get a doctorate or something like that. In this part of Gallifrey sort of we have them wanting to be Time Lords and different people from different backgrounds can actually get the title of Time Lord. So the Doctor wants to create different academies, people do not like this, people from the different chapters do not like this, however the Doctor goes on with it anyway, but sort of a secret committee of people set on Gallifrey that nobody except the Lord President knows about, which will once say law has sort of been said about, they will go into the future, check how that law works out, then come back in time and go, no, that worked out badly, don't bother doing it whatsoever. So considering the Time Lords are a race that definitely have a law and do not interfere. They interfere in their own laws and past and present and future quite a lot. They're a little bit of a complicated race. However, this sort of sets it out quite well. Meanwhile, because Tegan doesn't pass a test to actually stay on Gallifrey, she is on the verge of being sent back to where she came from, so they're going to use the same technology from what was used in the war games to brainwash Zoe and Jamie. However, of course, it doesn't, of course, work. And by the very end of the story, Tegan becomes the human representative towards Gallifrey, and then we have that reoccurring theme for the rest of this. I guess you could call it a series. The second episode is past indiscretions, and we have a little bit of a field trip going on where the Lord President is going to go and do Lord Presidential things by visiting a planet and sort of showing the alliance that they have with another species. And in this one, it has a rather interesting idea of having these rather godlike creatures. We have a moment where they, in fact, have a little bit of a sit down to reveal the past history of this race and what they've done to sort of enslave people to an extent by using their godly powers that introduce each other and then one of the main godlike people goes hang on Leela my sort of brother or something like that was killed by somebody called Leela and they look like you and then we have the doctor that was mentioned in there as well and automatically have this rather sort of uncomfortable moment where you essentially have this rather happy thing going on to find out the person that you're being happy with in fact killed your family and your brother. A bit awkward, but at the same time, I really like the way that it's been done. I think to go off Gallifrey for this one is a really nice sort of fresh feel, considering that others are based on Gallifrey. But yeah, probably for me, it's my least favourite of the box set. I think that out of all the others, it doesn't really have anything that is stand out, unlike the other ones that go and do different things. This one, although it has a few nice settings, I still feel that could have contributed a little bit more.
Well, Drury repeating is a rather unusual story as we're introduced to a character that is a little bit brainwashed by what the Doctor did in the very, very early years where he went and sort of stole a TARDIS and left Gallifrey. And in this story, we have a character that meets Tegan, starts talking to her, asks if she wants to go for a coffee, I do believe, to then go and steal a TARDIS and go travelling around the universe whilst the Doctor is going to do presidential things like conferences and meetings. You have these other people that are essentially amateur versions of the Doctor. At the very end of it, we have them plummeting for the very start of time where the Doctor needs to ditch all of his presidential jobs to go and save the day. And we have him stealing a TARDIS and then going to help them. So we do get introduced to lots of different models of TARDIS. We have a battle TARDIS in the previous story. Then in this one, I do believe a Type 40X or something like that or just a Type X or something. So yeah, if you're into your TARDIS models and different TARDIS designs or battle TARDISes, then this is definitely an episode for you. However, the main thing that I like about this one is the president of Gallifrey going to save the day whilst he's in his swishing robes and royalty with his big sash. He's there in his rather unusual looking TARDIS going to save everyone and sort of talk to this amateur doctor of why he's a bloody idiot, to be honest, of going to try and think that he can be the doctor and save the universe. And we have a little bit of a telling off at the very end. The final episode of the box set is Architecture of Destruction and it has a really interesting premise. We have the opening or the grand opening of the Citadel of Gallifrey, which is in fact seen on the cover, as you can tell. It is obviously the new series Citadel and we have them essentially having a little bit of a tour around the Citadel and the way that it works, the different rooms, the things that we do of course see in the new series as well as the future half of the classic series as well. And I just love it. It is essentially having a tour for 30 minutes, however, having problems hit the Doctor as well because we have the designer that very much takes the Doctor and his personality and what he likes to do at heart and she uses that to inspire the way that she makes the Citadel itself. And we find out that there are some rather unusual things going on in the Citadel and halfway through we find out that the main design inspiration for this was the Doctor goes to travel around the universe and he loves the idea of being able to escape. So the designer thinks what if you were able to escape and go and do your different things however at the same time come back to your TARDIS which is in fact the whole entire Citadel and we find out that the massive Citadel that we have in the new series is in fact one giant the biggest ever TARDIS and everybody within the Citadel of Gallifrey is in fact in a giant TARDIS that is trapped within time. It's sort of within a time loop which it can no longer in fact take off and at the very end we have that this TARDIS is a he apparently so I like that little change in gender role where we have our current TARDIS, our favourite TARDIS I guess always sort of referenced as a she. This one is a he however we have this TARDIS sort of figuring out what it is and as soon as it finds out what it is it's then stopped from doing what it wants to do, travelling around the universe. So it's kind of sad, you feel sympathy for this TARDIS, but at the same time you understand why. Because there's this very important scene where the Doctor goes, by giving the whole Citadel the power to travel around the universe, it pretty much gives the open hand of, we're going to dominate absolutely everybody and we're going to rule over everyone, and once again become that idea of gods. And I just love the way that this episode plays with that idea of Gallifrey and culture, and plays with the limitations of what they can and can't do, because essentially the Time Lords do have the power to do whatever they want. It's just the case of what of that power they're actually going to exercise and actually do. And I think that, that episode mainly does base around that. And generally overall for that, it's my favourite episode of the box set. Overall for the time in office release, as I say, it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. There is a few moments that I must admit I did sort of zone out a little bit from. I think it could have been not necessarily more higher paced. However, I think that could have had a few more things thrown in to sort of take it to the next level. However, considering all these episodes are only 30 minutes long they are all really well self-contained I think a thing that was unlike with the previous box set the memory bank and other stories that I reviewed I felt that you kind of had a few episodes that were just there to go why do these exist? However, with this one, all of them contributed to the overall idea. They all have the theme of power and the different ways that that is exercised. For this format, almost having little bits of evidence plotted all the way through and having these different adventures going on at the same time, it works really well. More so than the one that I previously reviewed, as I said, the memory bank and other stories. And it's probably the main reason why I don't review the short trips as well, because I kind of just feel... What is the point of the short story format? However, 
in some cases it works really well at the same time so overall for this release it is a really unusual one i can imagine this definitely homing in better with your primarily classic fan if you're a new series fan you maybe not like this story as much just because of the context of what it actually is the laid back idea of gallifrey and law and law itself if you like law you may like this release if you like sort of going into gallifrey and history maybe even if you like the current book releases that we've had going on and such as a brief history of time lords maybe even the myths and legends release as well if you've been reading them you may like this release and just having sort of it in an audio format to an extent to hear about gallifrey and law but yeah generally overall this release will not be for everyone and it's probably one of the most niche episodes of Doctor Who that I've ever encountered and for that reason I'm going to give Eddie Robson the credit of being rather original as well as sort of experimenting with Gallifrey and history so for that reason it's experimental and I do quite like it however I kind of sort of admit that it will not be to everybody's tastes. That's it for this release and I guess you can join me all next time in the next Big Finish Monthly Range Review as I take a look at the return of the Sixth Doctor Constance Clark and Flip in a Sixth Doctor Pure historical, yay, two big massive boxes tick there, Sixth Doctor and Pure Historical at the same time, in Bethamoth, or however you say it. I don't know. I'm going to need to figure that out for the next review. But yeah, I guess I'll see you all then, or whatever other video I upload next. Yeah, thanks for watching. I guess I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.